I'm hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the fly. Sing, sing, sing. Hello, everyone. It is time for the second episode. We made it through the first one of the Indie Mayhem Show. Thank you for joining us once again this week uh, on the Sorgatron Media Network of Feeds of Podcasts. Um, joining us, as always, uh, with me is Sorgatron. Sorg, how are you? Ready to talk indie wrestling. Having survived some indie wrestling over the weekend, uh, very yes. excited to get, uh, get some perspective from the Texas side of things. I really like that we're we're doing a swaparoo thing where we get somebody from your neck of the woods, we get somebody from my, my neck of the woods, uh, and so we get to see both sides. It's not just like one region, uh, and this is kind of the second part of that experiment. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, this is episode number two of the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, you can contact us. By various different means, including our email, goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Make sure if you email us to include the subject line indie uh, so we know that it's for us. Uh, you can also call our hotline if you want to leave a voicemail at 412 412- 206 WMS0, uh, which is 9670 for those that still use rotary dials. Um, Twitter at Mayhem Show. Follow us on Facebook, Google Plus. Uh, and if you're listening to us, you're probably listening to us on our various different feeds of either iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, um, different stuff. If you're on iTunes, please leave a comment. That would be very nice. I would very much appreciate that personally. And if you want to join us live, we film live every Tuesday night at around about 11 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 p.m. Uh, Central for this guy right here uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com so you can join in on the conversation over there. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. We have a very special guest for this week, our second guest here on the uh, Indie Mayhem show. Uh, like we said, you know, Sorg was working with Joe Dombrowski in the Pittsburgh area, so I decided uh, one of my uh, one of the coworkers I've worked with in the Texas area, a good friend of mine, uh, he is photographer right. extraordinaire for a lot of the Texas independent wrestling uh, events, uh, mainly uh, predominantly for Anarchy Championship Wrestling, but he's also done work for Inspire Pro as well as a couple others. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one Kelly Kyle. Kelly, how are you? Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> oh, Kelly. This is going to be fun. Podcast debut for Kelly Kyle, from what I believe. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, I hear you have some really good stories. So um, uh, let, let's start it off how uh, we sort of try to start off um, every interview that we do. Sort of get in touch because a lot of times, especially with independent wrestling, uh, it's because, you know, you get into it because you're a fan. Um, so what was, what was the first thing you ever remember seeing uh, in pro wrestling? <sighs> Uh, I literally don't know. Uh, I've always watched wrestling and, uh, I, I couldn't tell you the first moment. Like it's been so long. I just, it's always been there for me. Uh, the earliest memory I think I have was probably a tugboat turning on the bushwhackers and going heel, but I already knew who they were. So that's like one of the first big moments, but I can't tell you what the first actual moment was for me. Mm Mm-hmm. It's very cool. I mean, it's a it's a big moment, big moment in the world of professional wrestling. I I can see why it gets you know gets you hooked. I remember being so mad at that. <laughs> we had such a great outfit. I mean, and it had to go. <laughs> I think I was also super into Popeye. Like they had like Popeye and Son cartoon on Saturday morning, so it kind of like went together. That whole sailor idea. I don't know. Whatever gets us to Shockmaster, that's all I care about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, well, that's what gets you in. Uh, but uh, we also want to bring up sort of like uh, sort of the circumstance of how people got their break in wrestling and how they sort of did that. Uh, uh, how did you start doing photography? I know, I believe from what I remember, uh, you you went to shows uh, starting as a fan, if I remember. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I always went to WWF shows uh, growing up. I never had any independent wrestling uh, experience until about 2001. There was uh, some local shows in Austin that were not good, and uh, I went to see them. They had like a uh, Impact players rip off. They had just everything you think of as the awful indie shows, and that's what I thought like Texas Indies was going to be. So I didn't go to another Texas Indie show 
till about 2007, I happened to come across a, I was on the email list for IWA Mid South, and they were going to be doing some shows here in Texas with a new group called ACW. And then I saw that they were going to be doing shows uh, right around where I lived with uh, Mike Quackenbush. It was going to be Mike Quackenbush in Giddings, Texas, which is about 20 minutes away from where I live or lived. And then the next night was going to be Claudio versus Mike Quackenbush in San Antonio. And that was uh, nice. March 2007. So that's when I first started getting involved and actually going to shows and immediately fell in love because they had wrestling. They had, you know, hardcore stuff back then. I'd never seen, you know, glass and barbed wire and actually, you know, blood and all that stuff. So it was just a real new thing to me, and it was actually good. It wasn't what I thought, you know, especially Texas Indies was going to be. And so I started going to shows regularly, talking to Darren and Rachel on the Internet and becoming friends. And uh, I would always take pictures. I had, like, some crappy digital camera that my friend at a bar found and gave to me. And uh, I always loved photography. I just never had a nice camera. And then that summer for my birthday, I got – a nice camera specifically to take pictures. And I just started taking pictures from my seat front row. And then uh, they let me take pictures. They told me to start taking pictures ringside. And uh, just from there it grew. Very cool. So it was, so you sort of, you didn't necessarily have like a, a background in photography when you first started. It was sort of just like an interest for you. And I guess it was, from what I can tell, it was sort of the management seeing like, Hey, you could do this and, and you could be really good at this sort of. Yeah, they know I was like cool as shit. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I, you know, just I was good friends with them and they liked what I was doing and they kept pushing me and I had the equipment. And, uh, yeah, I always loved wrestling. I always loved photography, even though I didn't have the equipment. It was just always like I would spend probably hours just looking at just magazines, just at the photos. So that was always something that I kind of, you know, had prepared myself for of what I knew I wanted to, when I actually started taking pictures, I knew what I wanted to do with it. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and, and I wanted to bring you on specifically this week cause we had talked with Joe Dombrowski last week. And I think one of the things we mentioned was, um, in sort of the talk with like referees, um, sort of like the underappreciated parts of a pro wrestling show. And I think one of those aspects is definitely the photographer's, and photography, I find them very underappreciated, uh, especially in a uh, environment, I guess you could say, where it's all about image. So I think, and you know, your your stuff has been on tons of like you know flyers and and just like people use your stuff for like promo pictures, obviously, and stuff like that. Do, do you find that do you find photography in wrestling sort of to be like an underappreciated art form? I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean. Uh... It's something that's all over the place. I mean, you can't have a flyer without the pictures. You can't advertise anything really uh, unless, you know, you have video on YouTube. But most of the time, you know, you can't put a YouTube video on a car. So uh, it's something that, especially for groups that don't have videos or DVDs or when it takes, you know, a while to get stuff out, you got to have the pictures. It's what gets the people into it, the, gets their imagination flowing. If you have a good action shot or even a promo picture where someone just looks buff and you just or have some crazy look where you're like, I want to see that person live. And I, I've had, you know, I've seen my pictures on a billboard. I, I've seen pictures of uh, in newspapers, and uh, I have a picture of uh, Sarah Del Rey sent in to an interview she did for this magazine in England where uh, – it's actually a uh, – it's for ladies, but it's basically a gay magazine. So <laughs> I wasn't credited on that, and I'm okay with that just because I have other things in life that, that might become an issue. Yeah. But, uh, I'm cool with it. <laughs> if, you know, not, every, not every day you can get your photos in the uh, male's homosexual magazine. That's, that's cool stuff. Especially for, um, for Sarah Del Rey. There you go. Uh, uh, well, you do like – and like – for your photography, which if you don't if you don't go to uh, his website kellykylephotography.com, dot com, great stuff. A lot of really good promo work, just awesome, awesome photos. Uh, but you also, I the thing I love about your stuff is, uh, especially at ACW shows, you do a lot of. I I the only best way I can refer to it is themed photography. Like you do like stories, like through like I guess like photo sets, uh, which I think is kind of cool. Um, uh, what what is what is your favorite sort of like theme of photography? I guess you've done like different 
like styles. My, one of my personal favorites, just to throw that out there, is uh, you did one for the December show last year, I believe. Uh, for those that don't follow ACW, there's a, a female wrestler there named Jessica James who has an alter ego named Lady Poison, uh, whose gimmick is that she basically kisses you and spits uh, green uh, goo, I guess you could say, into your mouth, and it poisons you. And so the theme was that Jessica had mistletoe and was uh, offering... Uh, the mistletoe, I guess, to various members of the locker room. And it was funny stuff. I encourage people to check it out. But uh, what, what's your favorite sort of theme that you've done for photography? Well, I think uh, I have my my two personal series that I like to call them is the, uh, well, first, my Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Because uh, <laughs> one day I happened to find that luckily my uh, mom had kept my original 2 by 4 foam Hacksaw foam, whatever you want to call it, two by four and just <laughs> flip it around. Uh, and so I've been getting whoever I can to take, do a hacksaw pose with that. And I've got, yeah, yeah, as far as showing now, yours truly has been in that. And yeah. I, I am honored. I am so honored I, to be in that. I've had the list, jazz, the list of Ronnie names. Mack, Chris hero, third array, delirious, Daisy Hayes, Daphne, Jerry Lynn, like just about everybody that's come through ACW. Uh, Rob Conway, uh, Funaki refused. Uh, <laughs> and then my other series that I do is, uh, the, I'm not sure the actual name, if there's a proper name for it, basically the classic wrestler pose or grappler pose. Nice. Uh, I just like, uh, old, like old school poses that you would see back in the day. That was pretty much every photo. That's awesome. You see Eamon not quite getting it right, but he tries. I, 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 couldn't, I don't know what to do with the legs. The legs were the problem for me. Um, but that's cool. I remember uh, back during your birthday, which, funny enough, fun fact, uh, this is where we played the WWE, like, fun fact. Me and Kelly have the same birthday, and he had his before mine. Oh, you're like brothers. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get that legally changed. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but but uh, he, uh, I know you offered on Twitter for people to just send you photos of them doing classic wrestler poses. So apparently that, uh, that's a big inspiration for you, I believe, when it comes to uh, your photography. It's just a great pose. It's an I awesome actually, uh, well, I paid him. I didn't want to be in, to insult him. I paid the million-dollar man, Ted DiBiase, to do the pose for me. And he did it after just a lot of long stares and like, really, you really want this to happen? And I told him, yeah, that's my pose, bro. <laughs> and he asked me if he wanted, like, at first, uh, he was like, you're really going to pay? You don't want a picture? And I said, no, I just want you to do this pose. It's my thing. And he said, what about the million dollar belt? And I said, if you can get it in there, that's fine. If not, I don't really care. <laughs> and he couldn't get it in there, but I do have it, him doing the pose, so. I, everybody has a price, and his was about twenty five bucks. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, speaking of sort of stuff like that, um, uh, what is? And I think this is one of the uh, questions I want to ask a lot of people um, when you get involved in wrestling and stuff like that. What what has been the way I phrased it? Uh, what has been your holy shit, this is cool moment? Um, because I've had a couple since I've started working uh, for a wrestling company, and I, I'm sure you've had a bunch because you've done a lot, uh, like you said, since you started. Um, what, what, what do you think is that sort of pinpoint moment for you? Or you can have a couple. Um. Uh, it's kind of hard at this point. Uh, I would say the first time uh, that I actually got to just go to a show and like go in the building, because at first uh, – I was still a paying fan, even when I was friends with Darren and Rachel, uh, who owned ACW at the time. Uh, I was still like, I would go hang out with them and stuff. I spent a lot of time, but I still didn't go into the show just because I wanted to keep that mystique, uh, just have mm. the fun of the shows and not, you know, I wanted to be surprised and have fun. But then at some point, you know, I just wanted to be a part of it and really, you know, be in the business. And, uh, it was the May 2008 show where they, it was Sarah Del Rey that was going to be her ACW debut. And they asked me to go pick her up from their apartment because she was taking a nap and they uh, just needed somebody to go drive over there and get her. And so I think that was one where I just go in and picked up Sarah Del Rey. And then the other one was uh, having a Brian knobs in my face drunk. <laughs> and I didn't know I wasn't scared. And it was uh, this thing of either, like I was wanting to smile, I'm like whoa, this is Brian Knobs in my face, or and also at the same time thinking like man, like do I have to beat up Brian Knobs right now? Because that would be <laughs> not good. 
<laughs> That's something to take off the Poor checklist. Business. But, but yeah, I mean, I, and you've done a lot of cool stuff. I know, uh, this past year, I guess, so I guess it would count as this past year. You did, uh, you did ringside, uh, photography for a ring of honor when they came into town and, and even some of your stuff made it on their DVD. Um, so, so do you find it kind of, I don't know, what's, what's the feeling of like, re, like realizing that sort of the, getting the opportunities like that to, you know, take photography, I guess, for what people, m- many people, I guess, may refer to as like the number three in the, in the u.s right now i mean it's a it's a pretty big deal for me i mean i watched ring of honor before you know it was uh, up and running like i was pumped for it and you know i've been on top of it ever since it's you know always been one of my favorite groups and uh, so that was a huge honor uh i didn't get a chance in 2008 uh which are some of these pictures shown right now uh just because they already had someone at the time, and also I just broke my leg, or 2009, excuse me. And uh, But I got to go and actually help set up uh, the ring or the guardrails and that kind of stuff. I actually, uh, that was a show that they had Kamala on it, and uh, Justin Bissonette, who's one of the uh, owners of Inspire, he actually went and bought me and Kamala chicken sandwiches. So that's, you know, another uh, proud <laughs> moment. That, that's a good moment. That's a really good moment. Yeah. Um, uh, and now, um, I know for now for ACW, you're actually doing a bit more stuff than just like the photography stuff. Like I know you're doing some more stuff with like their interview reels and uh, more of their production stuff like that. Um, how how have you found uh, doing that? Uh, both like the challenges and also the rewards of sort of like getting to do new stuff like that. Well, I mean, uh, I've been doing uh, wrestling photography for seven years now. And uh, there's only so much you can do with promo pics and action shots. And uh, you see a lot of the same stuff over and over, just moves and stuff like that. And uh, I'm pretty limited in where I can be at ringside just because I am a big dude and I got a bad, bad knee, so it's tough for me to bend down. So I'm pretty limited in that aspect. So with the interview reels and all that stuff, filming, I get to be more creative. I get to have more control and input into what's going on in front of me instead of just trying to capture whatever's happening and uh just uh going with the editing it's uh starting to get back into that uh really going with uh kind of the old ecw hype reel kind of thing not quite mm-hmm. exactly but that's kind of my inspiration with that with the way i cut up interviews and i kind of just have like a story like we like to tell stories and uh, that's the way I look at it, like kind of a mini book with chapters where you can go back and forth between interviews and and also the creative aspect of making a connection for real. Because I, I give each uh, interview reel like a title just because it is kind of like a little story to me and you'll see themes and that kind of stuff. So it's just this new aspect that I uh, am really into and uh, I think it adds, you know, even more to the company because for a while we uh, didn't have those interview reels consistently and uh, it helps get stuff across the angles and it gets characters over. And that's what I'm trying to do with that. Just help build more with the product. Yeah. And I definitely, I love the new like style and like, like you said, very ECW uh, Pulp Fiction esque uh, sort of in the way it's uh, edited. I, I really, I really enjoy that stuff. I encourage anyone to definitely check out those interview reels. Um, now I know me and me and you have been talking about for a long time about getting you on a podcast because uh, from you, you have, uh, some amazing, uh, I guess I can call it road stories or just fun stories, I guess you could call it. Uh, and I know you wanted to share a bunch of them. So, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of leave the floor to you of any fun, fun <laughs> stories you, do you want to share with the internet, um, just, from your time in, in, uh, in the wrestling business? Well, let me just remember seven years of shit right now. <laughs> Just pull it out of my ass. Uh, well, I guess since I already brought up Brian Knobs, I can talk about that. That was a, I think it was a 2011 Lone Star Classic. They uh, the same one where I, the same weekend where I got a picture of a uh, Ted DiBiase. Uh, they had a Wizard World Comic Con thing going on with a big alley of wrestlers, all the old school wrestlers, and some of the recently released people, and uh the nasty boys were there and they somehow were able to talk themselves onto the show. I was at first I was pumped and then, you know, immediately realized that was going to be a bad idea because they were, you know, they lived up to the name of nasty. They, uh, 
were big partiers drinking the whole time. And, uh, they ended up getting called out by a submission squad and, uh, they came down after a really long time and did, uh, unprotected chair shot to Pierre Abernathy, who I don't think ever had taken a chair shot before to the head. So, and he didn't know that was coming and, uh, just, it was just really bad. And then they just kept cutting promos and, uh, like sag or knobs just kept saying, like, I don't care if this ends up on YouTube and nobody was filming it. So there wasn't a big worry about that. Uh, and they came out and just kind of ruined the end of the show. It was, you know, a tournament with ACH and uh, where he ended up winning the title, ACW title in the tournament for the first time. I believe, Cause I have the DVD of that. I believe there's one part where Jerry Sags is like continually trying to get ACH to like stretch out his injured ribs. <laughs> but yeah, he uh, came out and was there happened to be an empty seat that he just took front row. I think someone had got up and then just weren't going to have their seat back. So he was out there a few matches trying to get like this uh, photographer chick to do upskirt shots on Athena and stuff like that. And uh, then when ACH came out, he had his ribs taped up and, you know, Sags wanted to add to it. You know, he was at least attempting trying that and just went up. And uh, as ACH was walking up, he kind of lifted his arm up and then just slapped him real hard in the ribs and said he was good. (laughs) <laughs> and then ACH got in the ring, and they were about to start the match, and they actually rang the bell, and then Sags stood up. was like, hold on, hold on. I don't think he should continue. His ribs are really bad. And then just everyone just had to do the awkward. I think the entire building just awkwardly ignored Jerry Sags. And uh, they had the match, and then, uh, of course, he got in the ring when ACH won and uh, just wouldn't leave. And ACH was uh, trying to cut a promo. And uh, Brian Knobs, who's on the opposite side, side of the ring for me uh, threw a full beer and uh, hit the ring right in front of me. So I got covered in uh, beer from Brian knobs and then he just got chunk of beers the at Sags. And then they say tried to cut this promo and they were trying to wait because Gary J was going to be coming out and attacking ACH, but nobody would want to run out there because you don't know what Sags is going to do. And luckily a uh, Colt Cabana who was on the show, got in the ring, got him out and, uh, that we could do the thing. And, uh, like ACH was trying to get me to get Sags out. And I was like, how the hell am I supposed to get Jerry Sags out? But Cole Cabana was able to do it. And after the show, uh, Brian, not like they were drinking and stuff and now was hammered and he kept making his way outside. And I guess he, uh, there was something weird going on. I don't know if he was just, uh, being very, uh, handsy feely or just real, it wasn't a good situation whenever it was going on where a bunch of guys just said, Hey, we need to go kind of observe what's going on. We don't know what's happening, but it could end up not good. Just like an awkward situation. And we, a bunch of us went down there and I ended up, uh, we kind of got the people away from him. And I ended up with another guy having to baby, basically babysit Brian knobs on, uh, on the street, trying to get him back in. And uh, he had a full beer, like he had a beer out on the street, which is illegal. He can't have an open container on the street. And uh, he asked me, well, first he uh, ended up calling Stone Cold Steve Austin on a cell phone and Stone Cold did not answer, but he left a voicemail. And so I, I got why. to yell in the Stone Cold's voicemail. And I did say, and that's the bottom line, because I didn't know what the hell to say. And uh <laughs> They ended up, uh, he hung up on him. I actually had to hang up. He was too drunk to figure out his Android phone, and I had to hang up on Stone Cold Steve Austin for uh, Brian Knobs. And uh, he ended up trying to look. He had his fanny pack because he's old school. And he was trying to look for something. He asked me to hold his beer, and right as a cop was driving by, and so I just said, I'm just going to sit it down here because it's illegal and there's a cop there. And that immediately set him off like I was judging him. And this continued for about <laughs> 10 to 15 minutes. No matter what I said, I was some, like, everything was just like, like, you're making a mockery of me. You know, you, like, you, he actually told me that uh, I wasn't a real Texan. Like, I wasn't a tough Texan. And I did tell him, you know, I'm so, you're right. I'm not nasty enough. And he kind of got offended by that. <laughs> and it was just the whole time, just like, he was like, an, like this close, like an inch away from my face. And just, uh, and he's big. Like, I didn't think, you know, the nasty boys could, like, you know, let go, but they did. And uh, he just, uh, you couldn't 
I finally was able to get him back inside at the least. And then later on, he uh, was outside again. Like I was leaving the show and uh, he was with some other guys drinking again on the street. And I was like, I'm just going to, you know, maybe he's already forgotten because he's pretty drunk. And I went up and shook the other guy's hands. And then I just went and put my hand out and said, it was an honor meeting you, sir. Have a nice night. And as he reached and started shaking my hand, he just said, fuck you, as he's shaking my hand. And then starts <laughs> calling me, like, basically, I think he called me a party pooper. And uh, just started going off of me as he's shaking my hand. And then luckily, we're kind of on a hill, and uh, Sags was at this hot dog stand and yelled at Knobs if he wanted a hot dog. And as he turned and let go of my hand, I just immediately turned around and walked away. And then I kind of... Uh, looked back and I could hear him like, yo, fuck! Because he was mad because I walked away as he was berating me. So that was a pretty proud moment. So basically what you're saying is you're living the dream. Yeah, who, you know, thank God for hot dogs, I'd still be shaking his hand right now. <laughs> getting berated. That's amazing. So yeah, good, good fun, fun, fun stories about uh, the life and times of Brian Knobs and Jerry yeah. Sachs. Yeah, but a story like that, we just say, Pro wrestling. Pro yeah, wrestling. Pro wrestling. That, that, Welcome to the business. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's it. This is the kind of stuff that you run into and say, this is somehow my life right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's crazy. God, I hope I never have to babysit the nasty boys. <laughs> but uh, You have someone but, worse. Yeah. Um, so if you want to... Uh, uh, if you want to go ahead and promote uh, your website, uh, anywhere where people can sort of like follow you and like and see all your stuff or or you know get more info on all things Kelly Kyle, where where can they go? Well, I'm kind of going through a name change on the interwebs. Uh, I've been TexasAnarchy.com, and you'll still see pictures, and that's what basically the website still is TexasAnarchy.com. But I'm going through a switch with uh, KellyKylePhotography.com, and if you go to that. If you type that in, I'll immediately go to my old website, so that's still all good. And uh, you can find me on Twitter with the Kelly Kyle photo. And uh, I also, uh, on Facebook, I have the Texas Anarchy Photography page. Uh, if I wanted to change that, I'd have to send in documents. So that's going to stay the same because <laughs> I don't have documents. Uh, so you can find me there on Facebook and like my photos, and that'll keep you up to date on everything I do. Very right, cool. So de definitely go check this guy out. Cause he is, he is definitely one of the best uh, photographers I've seen. Uh, not just in Texas, he's a great indie photographer. So go support Kelly Kyle and all things and all of his projects. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And if you want to join us, I guess for the rest of the conversation uh, for the uh, indie mayhem show, uh, there's some stuff uh, that Sorg uh, got to participate in this past weekend. Am I right, Sorg? I did. I did. Uh, another great time uh, with Renegade Wrestling Alliance in West Newton here, uh, south of Pittsburgh. Uh, actually, a really small town here. I think, it was a, well, this will be the first time, I guess, really talking about them here. Um, unfortunate because my schedule, this is actually the last, I, I have this show with them, and then I'm actually not going to go back to work with them until uh, April. Uh, thanks to double bookings and stuff, but we're going to be sending the B team down there. Um, I always enjoy this crowd because it's a smaller town and it's smaller towns wrestling crowd. I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. how else to describe it other than, you know, um, it's always fun to fan watch on that. And the reactions are more genuine. If mm. that makes any sense. Like, like I always say, like these people are like, they are, it is still real to them. Um, I actually overheard some stories in the, uh, you know, uh, of, of, um, um, actually there was, a, actually one incident was from this, from this very night. Um, there was a, a, a segment where, um, their cruiserweight champion actually was proposing to his valet in the ring, Macho Man hmm. style, you know, um, and got attacked. And I think one of the girls wanted to kick the guy's ass um after the show <laughs> and it was asking security um like like when is he leaving so i can go out and, and find him um this is the kind of the, i don't know how many times like wrestlers have had have had to be escorted uh to their cars by security um after these shows and and mm -hmm. and, and generally not like tremendously dastardly stuff in the world of pro wrestling but just they got that crowd 
you know, um, a, you know that's that's how into it this crowd is, uh, and and that that's always been really fun to watch. Um, really happy to say that. Now, Eamon, you know, um, Jason Gorey has been a friend of the show since you know, yes. uh, since we first started going to IWC and everything, and I know I haven't been able to see him do much lately. Um, you know, just he just hasn't been part of anybody that I've been working with. Uh, but he did return, and I have heard G Raver, who we've had on the Wrestling Mayhem show before, uh, who is a uh, actually a Jakarta Wrestle Factory uh, grad, I believe. Um, he, they returned, and I got a little bit of a clip here for you guys on video, and they're doing their Generation Dead tag team now. Um, hmm. which you know, Gory, when I first saw Gory pop up years ago in RWA, it was a whole different guy, and he's he's going around doing. A really good kind of um, you know goth character. Really, um, he's got a cr- crazy good look. He's got an amazing look, and he's really into it. Like there was some point where he was just kind of a vanilla, uh, you know, you know, maybe Juggalo inspired, a little bit of face paint kind of thing going on. But he was just you know kind of a baby face, flippy guy. Um, and he, there was at some point a few years ago where he just left turn, figured it out, and now every time one of my guys go out there. Uh, at ringside with the camera, I'm like, get his face. Whatever you do, get his face. You know, this mm. guy does reactions very, very well. And to see uh, Raver, who again is guy with a mohawk, comes out the screaming music, does the flippy moves, goes through the goes through the ladders, goes through the tables and everything. Now he's coming out and and going along for that kind of ride too in this mm-hmm. latest iteration of what Gory's doing. Um, and that's one of the cool things I think about indie wrestling is that you see characters sort of evolve more than like, I guess, WWE in in the mainstream, I guess you would see a guy be a character and then they would go to developmental and then develop this new thing and then come back as a sort of like a Husky Harris, Bray Wyatt thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but you get to see people sort of evolve and try new stuff, I think on the indies, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really a highlight for me right now with that. Um, it, 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 so I'm looking for, and when they wrestled, they were doing a um, tag team gauntlet match um, to to uh, determine new tag champions. Um, mm. And uh, the way they they the way they wrestled, it, they 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 were wrestling two guys, uh, Zuboff, and I think the other guys, Brock Singleton, and they're bigger guys, right? Uh, you know. Big and actually, you might have a clip here. No, I don't have those guys. Um, but I mean, you know, Gory and this guy—they're kind of like the smaller, again, kind of flippy, skinny guys, right? That you really wouldn't think threatening at first. But the way they presented themselves—you saw the look if you're on video—and um, they really, like, I think commentary said something about like them being very feral and like a pack of dogs, and then they, they would like look at each other and attack. And it was a really cool, um, you know, kind of a uh, uh, feel to that. Um, other than that, I had an opportunity where actually I'm, I'm trying to, one of my New Year's resolutions is actually kick out some of these best of DVDs because we got a lot of really great stuff, uh, with our, uh, especially with IWC with the back catalog. Oh, my God. Um, and guys ju- just, you know, doing great stuff, you know, between Shulo going to NXT uh, this, uh, this month, actually. Um, you know, guys like Facade, guys like... Uh, Shima Zion, um, you know, we got plenty of footage of guys like AJ Styles and stuff. I'm really going to try to pump that up uh, as well to get some of that good stuff kind of repackaged so people can get it in front of them. Um, but I had to sit down. Uh, we decided to do something different for uh, Ryan Mitchell with RWA, uh, and he's a former like FCW WWE signee and stuff too. Um, so I got to sit down with him, and, and I might do this for a lot of these. Uh, to do like a little quick, at least a little quick, like 30 second, like, hey, what's this match about? And it was really cool to kind of get his perspective on stuff. And, you know, he, we have a match in there. Actually, it's going to be with Gory, um, you know, and talking about how much he hates steel cages and stuff. So, again, kind of trying to bring like kind of what we're doing here to kind of like get to the meat of what people are doing out there in the Indies, um, mm-hmm. and bringing that to that project. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun and kind of interesting i can't wait to do something like that if we get if we get the opportunity hopefully here uh, if schedules work out with guys like you know john mcchesney who's done so much stuff um that he's actually the one you ever you know the, the 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 story is um remember when colin delaney got the ecw spot mm-hmm. um he was one of the other guys that was up for that spot that really night. yeah so um, you know, guys like that. And, and just think, what would have happened? <laughs> what would have happened? It could have been John McChesney. And they're still, and they're both working in IWC now. So that's that's 
that's, that's pretty good. At least that's not a, a, a big issue or anything. So, um, but now, yeah, always a good time uh, and actually finished off the, the, the edit today. So I'll have the, hopefully the digital download up uh, in the next day or so. Uh, but always a good time. And of course, Wheels, who joins us on the uh, Mayhem show like he did earlier this evening. Uh, always great to hang out with him back at the sound booth uh, while we're going and just yelling at each other all night um, <laughs> and stuff like that. So it's, it's a really good promotion, a really fun promotion. And, 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 and everybody's really kind of out to make the promotion better. Um, mm -hmm. I don't get a lot of that weird vibe. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. The Jerry Sags vibe, for instance, or anything like that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with this uh, group of guys. It's always real cool. Everybody's having fun. I can't even describe how much they're having fun before and after the shows with these guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's blessed. So, so yeah, uh, rwalive.com if you want to check them out. I actually put up today, and I, uh, some of the footage I've shown there was from the uh, RWA wrap-up we do. It's kind of a post-show to kind of recap what happened, you know, you know, so, hey, this is what's going on. This is what you can check out on the DVD. Here's some clips so you kind of know what's going on uh, and kind of see what the promotion's about a little bit. Um, and we're trying to also work on getting a lot of, there's some flashback uh, matches actually on there too so people can see. Because um, this is a promotion that started, I want to say as a yarder promotion, but, mm. you know, started from, you know, some weird means and they really had to kind of build themselves up. And I think they still get a bad rap. And some people still think they're a crap promotion. And I got to admit, when I started in like, I think 2010, I started filming with these guys uh, under a different uh, production. And it was rough. It was kind of hard to watch their shows. Um, but I think they got a good group of talent. And I love that it's a different group of talent than you see anywhere else in the Pittsburgh area. Like, these guys are, like, this is a different group of people that are coming in. Like, I know some of them come in with Lodi. Um, uh, I think there's a group, always a group that comes in from Ohio and I think a few other places. Um, so it, it, it's another mix, and I, I really like just seeing something different, you know. And there's a few there's a few guys in there. Uh, John Schuyler really impresses me. Uh, I've only seen probably two matches with him, but, but he's been a really fun guy. And I think he might have been in developmental briefly i'm not sure i, I know he went somewhere where he was touring or something um so it's pr pretty cool uh, to do that and interesting to see Lodi, you know who we know from wcw uh being in there mixing it up with the young guys too so it's been a lot of fun so awesome very cool uh so yeah goes uh if you want to see some of the rwa stuff that sword produces you can go to uh, sorgatronmedia.com and go to the store tab and go buy some stuff because that would help sorg a Please lot go check and, it out. And, and I definitely encourage you guys to check out the best of them. We do flash sales all the time if you want to experiment and grab a mm -hmm. show or anything like that. So keep an eye out on the on the Twitters for that one. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's go in because there's a couple events this weekend that we wanted to touch on. And if you are a wrestling fan in any area, we encourage you to always go to indie wrestling shows. Um from the smallest to the biggest, go to them, go support indie wrestling talent. Um, but there's a couple of shows that are happening this weekend that we want to brought up. Sorg, I know you had one. Uh, yeah, we've actually been getting uh, – next week we're scheduled to have Jock Sampson, who we've had before on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Oh, uh, boy. And he was a trip. Uh, I, again, a guy I met because of uh, uh, RWA. I've seen him. He's done some hilarious stuff uh, whenever we go check out the, the DBI uh, uh, out in Ohio, and I know he does a lot of stuff in Ohio. And uh, he, and there's a uh, War Wrestling's actually got a show this weekend. I know that's one big thing he was promoting. We couldn't get a schedule in here uh, before that show. Uh, and unfortunately, this is not a show that um, I, I don't see that they have anything. One of the big rules is we want to make sure we have something that you guys can check out. Uh, that's video and everything. But I did want to give a, 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 a plug out there. And I hear some good things about War. Uh, a lot of great talents there. Uh, like Juice Jennings, uh, like Jock Sampson, um, a lot of great, uh, I think this is a mid-Ohio group. Uh, but they got an event coming up um, this weekend, like I said, um, the 11-year anniver 11, 11 anniversary show uh, on the 18th, that's Saturday, I believe, uh, at the AE Community Center in Herod, Ohio. I don't know my Ohio too well, but go, please check that out. If you want to find out more about War Wrestling, uh, warwrestling.com, they have a Facebook page, they have a Twitter and everything, so you can go uh, follow those uh, as well um, and, and find out more about War and see what's going on in Ohio and ask them how it is and why they don't have any YouTubes. Uh, but again, we'll talk with Jock Sampson uh, next week as well. Maybe we'll get some clips of him here up as well. Huh. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, there's a couple things that I wanted to touch on on my end. One event that's happening in the Texas area, uh, I think we, you should definitely check out. Uh, I will be attending. Kelly will be there uh, uh, Maybe. on the job. Maybe. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you can go check out Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Uh, they have their big, uh, their biggest event uh, this uh, coming uh, Sunday, January 19th, Guilty by Association 8 in Austin, Texas at the Mohawks uh, in downtown Austin, Texas. Big show. Uh, main event being Sean Beck's putting his career on the line against uh, the uh, Anarchy Heavyweight Champion Evangelistico in a steel cage match, which I believe is the first steel cage match for ACW. I know it's definitely the first one at Mohawk. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's that's going to be really interesting stuff. Uh, there's also uh, Masada making his return. Uh, his long way to return to ACW, taking on Scott Summers, uh, which should be a brutal match. Uh, there's a lot of really great stuff, a lot of great talent uh, from Texas, from St. Louis, from all around the world uh, that you should check out. Uh, if yeah. you want tickets, go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com uh, and go, like I said, go get tickets, go see me. I'll be there. Go see Kelly. He'll be there probably. Um, and yeah, go support uh, the Texas independent wrestling scene uh, at that event. I gotta say, uh, um, and they're, they, they've always had a really good presence on YouTube. It looks like um, I know you said maybe that's been a little bit you know lacking recently, but you can check out a lot of their history. Um, and, and, and definitely one that I've been interested in because I know you've been talking about it on, on our, our, our other show uh, for, for a while. But can I did, did I notice this? Is this is this Paul London's pro wrestling laboratory? What is yes, this? Yes, if you're if you're a uh, Austin, Texas or any oh, Texas no. native, uh, yeah, Paul has a wrestling school uh, awesome. out of the Austin area. Um, so yeah, the, and there's information uh, I believe the from the flyer you can uh, email plpro dojo at gmail dot com uh, <laughs> if you want to if you want to be a pro wrestler. That's so. awesome. Uh, he was actually up here recently. Um, he was part of the filming we did with Jimmy Corderas for the refereeing one hundred and one. Um, so he has a little bit in there. You know, he had some insight. But I heard really good things. Friends of the show um, actually attended his wrestling seminar. Um, he had one in Ohio, one here in Pittsburgh. Um, but they they had a lot of good stuff to say about him. He, he he's not. You don't go into his thing just thinking you're going to learn a bunch of flippy moves off the top rope. Uh, he mm-hmm. he is very into the psychology. You will learn the right things. Uh, to be a pro wrestler from the sounds of it. Uh, so so from from people I respect, some very good things uh, said about him. Um, and, uh, I, you know, it was it was actually kind of fun. I, I, we uh, uh, were doing some stuff uh, around town. I found out he went to school here in Pittsburgh, actually at Duquesne, about the time I was here at the Ur Institute. Really? So that was some really interesting, odd catch-up we, 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 we got to do there. So I wonder if I, <laughs> I ran into him downtown back in the day. By chance, you know. So you never know. They're awesome. Uh, so yeah, if you want uh, information, if you're a Texas star that, or a Texas person that wants to be a pro wrestler, go try Paul London Dressing School because uh, Paul star. can definitely teach you. Paul can definitely teach you right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and the uh, only other events that I wanted to talk about this week, there is uh, good stuff going in. If you like the Wrestling Is promotions, there's two events this weekend. Um, there is Wrestling Is Fun in Easton, Pennsylvania on January 18th, which is this Saturday. And then Wrestling Is Respect, which is in Boonton, New Jersey, uh, this Sunday, January 19th. Uh, those look like really good events, very different events, too. Uh, the thing, and the Wrestling Is promotions, I should say, the ones that are still around since they're being killed off by whoever may be running this whole Chikara business. Um, they, they got a different flavor to them. Wrestling is fun. is definitely a lot more of the comedy stuff, a lot more of the characters. Um, and you have a lot of the mixing characters, but then you have stuff like wrestling is respect, which is a lot, a lot of just really good wrestling. Um, just actually, you have the characters, but just mixed with a lot of great actual, like, pro wrestling and i and i really enjoy all the different stuff that they're doing uh so yeah go check them out uh if you're in eastern pennsylvania go to wrestling is fun if you're in boonton new jersey go to wrestling is respect uh this weekend saturday and sunday uh and if you can't make either you can always go to smvod.com and buy the various um video on demand video on demand uh mp4 uh, events from all the wrestling is promotions. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff you can uh, see if you want to go support those guys. Uh, they put out really good shows and there's a lot of, hopefully I think evolution with this Chikara thing. Hopefully it will come to a head very soon and hopefully we'll know what's going to happen. So 
Awesome. Yeah, I got to sample, of course, the Wrestling Is promotions at Natural Pro Wrestling Day last week, or last week, right. last year. Uh, which, by the way, I've noticed they've started posting uh, matches from last year uh, in promotion of this next uh, event. Uh, which I'm sure we'll be talking about heavily as, oh, as, it, yeah, as it comes I'm sure up. we are we, uh, as we go into this. Um, so, so looking forward to that, uh, of course, as well. I haven't heard if IWC is going to be a part of it, uh, so I don't know if there's going to be another road trip in my future or not. We'll find out soon, I'm sure. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, looking forward to that as well. Uh, but no, and I know you sent me some videos before of the wrestling is fun and, and all those Chikara characters and everything. Um, so that's been a blast. Uh, <laughs> is, just look up, just find some of the characters and just look up some of what they do, uh, including the Chuck Taylor Instagram 24 hour title defense uh series has just been tremendous to watch over over the years and if you if you like the fun wacky side of, of pro wrestling just go youtube some of the stuff and have some fun at it and, and go support them in their i pay-per-views and uh, uh on demands and everything too so mm -hmm. absolutely um so this is gonna be the final segment i guess you could say mm -hmm. for what we want to do here uh this is something i i was i thought thought about i wanted to theorize because uh, the point, I think, of indie wrestling, one of the many points of indie wrestling, uh, is uh, to meet new people and see new people <laughs> and see stuff you've never seen before and immerse yourself in in stuff beyond the norm and stuff beyond what you've seen constantly. Um, and based off of uh, indie wrestling uh, being very much dictated by the internet and you know you, there's a lot of stuff out there for you for you to watch if you're a fan of wrestling thanks to all these indie companies that put stuff out there and all these wrestlers that are exposing themselves for, through the internet there's a lot of good stuff you can watch so I devise a little fun segment that we can do mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of stealing from another Sorgatron Media uh, podcast insert coin to begin uh, and I'm going to experiment with the name but this is your indie wrestling challenge for the week okay um so basically what we're gonna do is and maybe me and sword can alternate this we're gonna pick a wrestler an indie wrestler um and basically we're gonna co we're also gonna compose a playlist on our wrestling mayhem show youtube page that you can check out and watch these videos of this wrestler to, so you can see more of them uh but also you're not restricted to the playlist you can watch whatever you want as long as you have this wrestler um and basically you're gonna watch it and uh, send us your thoughts at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com of what you thought. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, why, why not? Why do you think, you know, wh what were your thoughts on this? And just sort of the spreading of that and the spreading of, you know, the ideas uh, and spreading of the, you know, discussion. Um, so I organized the first one for this week, and I'm kind of cheating my own rule in the beginning uh, because this is a uh, international wrestler. But you know what? She's wrestled in America for for, for American promotions, so fuck it. Um, one of the topics I think a lot that comes with professional, uh, independent professional wrestling compared to like the mainstream stuff, a lot of it's women. Uh, there's a big debate about like the women's role in professional wrestling and mm -hmm. and can they be taken seriously and how they should you know how they should be portrayed and how you know all that kind of stuff. And you have the uh, obviously the divas at WWE and the knockouts and stuff like that. And you have companies on the indies that do sort of more that style of stuff, but you also have some of the more serious, serious companies like Shimmer and Shine and uh, WSU and a couple others that are more focused on the wrestling uh, and more focused on just sort of creating these dominant female characters. So one that I wanted to uh, put out there for the first challenge uh, is a female wrestler you may have heard of, you may not have heard of if you follow Japanese Joshi, and that is Kana. Uh, Kana is a uh, wrestler uh, f uh, for a great period of time, uh, obviously from Japan. Uh, she's wrestled in America a lot of times for Shimmer uh, and various other promotions. She had a, a couple of matches, I believe, in Shikara as well. Uh, including one against Sarah Del Rey, which I have on DVD, which if you can find that match, check it out because it is very great. Um, she's definitely a different hybrid of wrestler. She's very hard hitting, uh, very, I guess, strong style, you could say. Um, and she's breaking a lot of the norms when it comes to what a female wrestler can do, especially if you're exposed to her for the first time. So that's my challenge to all the one that's watching and to Sorg as well. Mm -hmm. I encourage, uh, and we'll probably discuss this, uh, at the beginning of our shows, um, just sort of, to, uh, immerse yourself with new wrestlers. Uh, and yeah, so 
there's the playlist on WrestlingMayhemShow.com that you can check out if you want to see uh, my picks, I guess, for stuff that I thought you should watch if you uh, want to get immersed in Kana. But like I said, you can watch anything involving her. You could even, if you want to go the extra mile, buy some DVDs or buy some MP4s that feature her um, and go watch those. So that's, you know, you, so you can support the indie wrestling world. Um, so that's my challenge to you. We'll definitely uh, read all of your responses. And you, don't have, um, you can email that to us. You can also tweet that to us at Mayhem Show Your Thoughts. Um, just let us know. Let us know what you think uh, and get involved in the discussion. So that is my challenge to you for this week. I'm looking forward to this because I know you You always uh, expose me to to – uh, such great newer uh, uh, stuff that I, I just don't have the opportunity to even think about, you know. Uh, so, mm-hmm. and, and this list is uh, about two hours and fifteen minutes of hot Asian lady wrestling. So I can't <laughs> wait to check that out. Uh, so, uh, and, and I love the names that are included in this. Uh, Her against uh, who was Serena Deeb, uh, that that was part mm-hmm. of the Straight Edge Society. I see Funaki as part of this. Tajiri. Uh, so I'm really interested to see uh, how that. And then- uh, former TNA uh, knockout Ayako Hamada is in there. Uh, there's there's some, there's some names you should be able to recognize, and and there's a, there's some different stuff. There's some intergender. There's like some of the, her matches with some of the other female competitors. Uh, there's I believe a hardcore match in there that's really oh. good. Nice. Uh, So there's a lot of cool stuff. So definitely go check that out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, Kelly Kyle, welcome for, uh, thank you for joining us on the second edition here of the Indie Mayhem, sir. Namaste. (laughs) (laughs) I have a different thinking of that because I just finished the yoga section of GTA (laughs) five. Oh God. Um, Excellent. And of course, you can find us, uh, as usually, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including this show and our main show and our wrap-ups for Raw and TNA and whatever else may come along or interesting reading situations like uh, WrestleFan, or I'm sorry, Eamon here. I'm sorry, we're professional on this show. We are uh, pros. We have names. <laughs> we have actual names on this one. Um, wait, mine's Sorgatron still. Um, anyways. <laughs> that, that's not your real name? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I've been saying, lied to. Is, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subject line. I don't even know who you are anymore. 412-206-WMS0. Uh, give us a call and tell us who you think we are uh, and questions for any of our future guests uh, as well. Uh, we're on Facebook, Google+, YouTube, Roku, Stitcher, uh, all kinds of stuff. You can find us. Just look up Indie Mayhem Show and you'll find us in, in, in the best way possible for you to experience the show on a regular basis. Uh, you can join us every Tuesday around about 11 p.m. Eastern Time after the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, those times are definitely flexible so thanks for that thank you aim and thank you kelly cow thank you to our audience and uh go watch some indie wrestling never said i was a gangster or thug but i'm an animal peanut for the taste of the four sing 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 you know how i act now if you got a problem come and see if i'm a bad